Global experts share their perspective and insight on mainland China's policies and current stance in the world at the China Power Annual Conference held by the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Experts Edward J. Markey, Bonnie Lin, Alexander Huang, and John Culver highlighted the U.S. role in cross-strait relations. One thing the United States and the West have been slow to learn is that when strongmen like Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping tell us what they plan to do, we have to believe them. Following the Chinese Communist Party Congress last month, we know more about Xi Jinping's plans. China is doubling down on authoritarianism at home and abroad. China's actions undermine peace and stability across Taiwan Strait. This past summer, I traveled to Taipei to evaluate the situation firsthand. The trip underscored what should be a touchstone of our Taiwan policy, that if there is a military attack on Taiwan, it will be those living in Taiwan who will bear the brunt of the consequences. Therefore, we need to be intentional about the risks we take when crafting U.S. policy and ensure that risks have a tangible reward for Taiwan's security. A poll conducted by the Center for Strategic and International Studies asked the audience if they thought China's new normal of increased military activity in the Taiwan Strait is likely to lead to a U.S.-China or China-Taiwan crisis or conflict in the next year or two. It seems about 70 percent, 68 percent of those listening right now seem to agree that we are not going to see a crisis or conflict in the Taiwan Strait in the next year or two, at least not caused by the new normal of increased military activities. Uh, Hannah, if you could also show the polling that we did on Twitter. Uh, I think this poll was on Twitter for three days, so a little bit more time, which showed the results were a little bit more uh, evenly spread. 45, 46% agreed that there, we might see a crisis or conflict, and about 55% agreed. Uh, disagreed. Alexander Huang, the representative to the U.S. for the KMT, expressed his hopes on maintaining peace across the strait and in the region. Maintaining peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait is in the interest of all parties. In the Indo-Pacific region and has been the policy uh, of the United States. I mean maintaining peace and stability. According to a uh, news report, uh, in the virtual meeting in March this year and uh, the site meeting during the G20 uh, a, few years, uh, a few days ago, President Biden has expressed that the United States does not seek to get into a new Cold War with China, does not seek to change the Chinese political system, does not seek to strengthen alliance against China, does not support Taiwan independence, and has no intention of getting into conflict with China. In Taiwan, uh, decades of public opinion polls have shown the massive majority support of the status quo, i.e. Uh, no unification, no independence, and no war. Even though the current DPP government does not recognize the 1992 consensus and suffers the absence of communication lines with Beijing, it has continued to claim the status quo as the official policy. Three, uh, despite the growing voice inside China calling for the use of force to resolve the political differences across the Taiwan Strait, and Beijing has never renounced the military option against a possible de jure independence of Taiwan. The Chinese government and uh, Xi Jinping have maintained the peaceful unification, quote unquote, as the primary policy toward Taiwan as of today. A military conflict before January 2024 uh, may disrupt and possibly lead to a cancellation of the election in Taiwan and extended the DPP administration in power. And this is a factor that China needs to think about. And a military conflict in the Taiwan Strait between January 2024 and, um, and November 2024 may generate both Republican and Democratic candidates in a contest of anti-China campaigns 
and make the great power competition more unpredictable. John K. Culver, a non-resident senior fellow at the Global China Hub, Atlantic Council, stated that China's decision to use military force is conditions-based, all depending on the actions of Taiwan and the United States. More recently, the United States, which previously seemed to understand this, appears to now subscribe to a belief that China's use of force is just a matter of time. This creates a dynamic for a serious crisis or war. Whether U.S. actions create the conditions for a war it nominally seeks, where U.S. actions create the conditions for a war that it nominally seeks to deter. I think the trigger would be, would be the policy positions of those candidates and the policy positions of those vying for the nomination, because I suspect many and perhaps most of the leading candidates for office, uh, with the possible exception of a retiree in Florida, would actually be campaigning that we should drop strategic ambiguity and recognize Taiwan as a separate entity from China and commit full-throatedly to Taiwan's military defense. I think that that is what would precipitate the crisis, not just the you know, camera shots on the, on the tarmac in Taipei um, or, or Shinju, but it would be the policy shift signaled by the Republican Party toward a, a, a virtual, from a Chinese perspective, abandonment of the basis for diplomatic relations. Following Xi Jinping and Joe Biden's first face-to-face -face meeting in Indonesia, whether China-U.S. relations will move towards a more peaceful path is under close watch by the entire world. TVBS World Taiwan.